What's up, everybody? Hey, thanks for tuning in and having a little trouble here, but I think we got it. Uh, Mr. Producer Man got it ironed out, and so hopefully we're live. <laughs> Want to say hey to everybody out there in Hawaii. Frank Roach, for brother, hey, good seeing you, or good uh, you seeing me anyway. I can't see you. Um, how'd y'all like that new open? We are rocking it this year. New rods, new open, bunch of new stuff going on, new shoes. Hey, I can't say enough about season 19. I can't believe it's been that many years, but hey, season 19, we got uh, the old rockin' school open. I mean, I hope you guys like that. Let us know what you... Uh, That's old school, man. It's old school. Definitely old school stuff. But, uh, hey, get me in. Come on. All right. There's uh, there's Mr. Producer Man right there. He got, <laughs> he got all his buttons finally figured out, so... What's it's, going on, guys? Glad <clears throat> to have you for 2019, or actually season, right? Season 19. Season 19. 2018, we're in season 19. So glad to have you guys. Uh, we're going to give you behind the scenes some stuff that uh, you're going to see on YouTube tonight. So let's talk about it. What do we got well, coming un up? Uh, unlike other TV shows out there, our season is once a year. So we, you know, if we were on <laughs> twice a year, we could claim, what, 40 seasons almost. So anyhow... <laughs> 19 years we've been doing this. Thanks for everybody that's been with us that long and and everybody that's been with us, you know, since you've been able to find the show. Hopefully you're going to be able to go online tonight, smash that bell on the YouTube button, and you're going to get notifications of all the new shows coming up, new previews, all kinds of stuff that Mr. Producer Man does behind the scenes that y'all don't get to see. All y'all get to see is what I do. I get to fish and have fun, and, you know, they do all the work basically behind the scenes, putting it together and doing their best to make me look young still, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's, why we're here tonight, definitely. Um, we are debuting the first episode on YouTube. It's uh, Jared Sear down in Key West, right? We talked about that. Yep, good old Jared Sear. We did a show with Jared in the Marquesas last year or year before. I think that was last year. I think it was last, last year or the year before. I don't know, so many seasons they all run together, especially when you got great guides that you're going with that put you on the fish. And Jared put us on tarpon in the marquesas last year if y'all get a chance to watch that video go to our youtube site and it's called marquesa on the fly marquesa on the fly yeah i had the buggy whip and catching tarpon and it was one after the other after the other i wish we could have put all of them in there that we caught that day but uh had an absolutely great time with jared and uh this year in an upcoming episode you're going to see his brother brandon Woo! absolutely a knockout of a show uh, out of Key West. We didn't have to go to the Marquesas. I don't say we didn't have to, but uh, I would have loved to, but the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour. But we got it done in Key West. So we got the Key West Slam, uh, big permit, nice tarpon, and a bonefish. So y'all stay tuned for that episode. It's going to be on later in the year, and y'all are going to love that one. I absolutely had a ball down there fishing with those Sear brothers. So uh, we actually went out with Jared again, and uh, that's the show you're going to see tonight on the Internet. It's a brand-new format just for you guys that tune into YouTube. And uh, sorry about my voice, but if y'all are, I mean, my pollen content around my house, <laughs> everything is green. I mean, when I blow my nose, it's green, and it ain't from snot. It's, I mean, it is pollen, and it's in my throat now, so we'll see how long I can go on tonight. But uh, just uh, absolutely, like I said, new format just for YouTubers out there. Um, you guys are definitely making our channel happen if you can, you know, share it with your friends. Uh, the more people we got subscribing, the longer we're going to be able to stay on. That is definitely for sure. Um, Shall we give them, give them a little a look at what's going to happen here on YouTube? We got a little little sneak peek of, of what's uh, going on. I don't know. We can. Uh, there's uh, just going to be a lot of extra footage that, you know, how we normally every year throw a big show together at the end of the season called Bits and Bites. I think we still might do that one, but uh, that'll be up to producer man Kevin. Uh, but our Bits and Bites stuff is going to be how we basically lay out the YouTube show. And it's 17 minutes long. Yeah, this one, the first one tonight is 16 minutes long. So 16 minutes. So after we're done with the AF Live tonight, uh, y'all are going to get to see the first episode on YouTube. Yeah, so. first episode. And certainly uh, we're going to give you a little behind the scenes tonight, too. We're going to show you, like Blair said, that we, we're filming Doc to Doc. So uh, what you're going to see in the TV show is just a small portion of what we're showing. What do you think about shooting the new format, because I know the cameras are now shooting everything. Now. Well, I hope the beep button is still working. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been curving myself a lot. I made myself a New Year's resolution, but uh, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough one to not say a certain words, especially when a fish breaks off or you know, slam your rod tip into, into <laughs> something and it breaks. But uh, yeah, man, happens to me too. 
Let's go ahead and uh, show them a little taste, guys. This is a taste uh, fishing with Jim Hobalas. Yep, Jim Hobalas. We went down to Flamingo and fished Whitewater Bay. Uh, it was blowing pretty good there, too, fishing the big old double XL Mirrodine for tarpon. So, y'all check this little piece of footage out and tell us what you think. Yo, come on. What size leader you want? 40, maybe? 40? Yeah. Getting old, man. I can't see anymore. All right, well, there's your little sneak peek of what's going to happen on the uh, oh, on the yeah. internet show. That looks fun. And uh, yeah, I kind of like the format, able to drink my coffee and uh, kind of <laughs> relaxed on that one. That was, uh, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen that day, but uh, we knew I was going to be able to tangle with some big fish, and we sure enough did. What I like about it, though, is it's that nervousness that you, you know, what you don't realize when we've got camera guys and drones flying and underwater cameras and, and that tension at the dock when you're leaving not knowing what the day has in store for us. So certainly that show, we had two huge tarpon. Uh, you'll see it next Monday at 7 o'clock on YouTube. So make sure you guys subscribe so you'll get notifications when we upload that next week. Give us your comments. We'll start taking your uh, questions right here. Where's everybody from tonight? Let us know where you're from. I'm seeing on the, uh, on the Internet here uh, fishing and free diving in Ireland. 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 What kind of visibility you got in uh, the North Sea up there? That is the North Sea, right? <laughs> Ireland. I know when, cool. I went, I went out in, uh, when I was in the Air Force, went out swimming off of Den Hag, and, uh, or Den Hag, however you want to pronounce it, off of um, Wexford. Holland. Wexford. Amsterdam. And, Ireland. Very but, nice. Uh, yeah, I believe that's the North Sea. But, uh, I know we got Hawaii in the house, right? Cold water, yeah. Franco out in Hawaii. And... Uh, Oh, what's that lure in the fish tank back there? That is a broken glass Mogan edition, uh, Mogan series yeah, edition see if you mirror can see lure. see it in our wide shot here. Can you see it back there dancing around? Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. We were using the bigger version on the show. You're going to get to see it at 7 o'clock uh, for the tarpon. But uh, that one right there is just the XL Mirror Dean, one of my favorite lures that Mirror Lure makes. I used to be, talk about old school, here's what I used to use, the 52M18 used to be my favorite lure and that's basically kind of the same color green back white sides uh but it had three treble hooks on it you definitely needed band-aids every time you took one of those out of the package because <laughs> you got stuck for sure <clears throat> tonight you also not only caught fish on the uh Miradine xxl you catch a tarpon on the doa shrimp on tonight's episode so if you guys that, that throw the doa shrimp uh he was probably hitting 100 plus pound Tarpon, and I think we ended up catching, what, a 60, 50, 60 pounder? Yeah, I, I changed over to the 8 foot. I was trying to give, I saw a bunch of little ones rolling, so I had the 7, 6 out throwing that one, and uh, hooked up with a giant one. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go to the 8 footer just because I know that'll whip a good sized fish. And what do I catch on the 8 footer? A little guy. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> like Tommy Z down there in the key says, uh, they're all good, some are just better than the others. <laughs> but uh, so folks from New Jersey on tonight, Corpus Christi. Uh, Chris Ortiz, uh, Nathan York out of What's Pensacola. Our new wide shot. Check it out. See oh, it? good wide shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got a question there? Do they sell the mug and rods anymore or have not tuned in for a while? Well, Brandon Ashby, uh, since you haven't tuned in for a while, we're now with Luz, who's a uh, rod company. And uh, this one here is going to be the one featured tonight. In the uh, in the show, we were catching uh, just massive sharks with this rod right here, and I mean it is it is so light. Whoops, and it's balanced, <laughs> oh so it should be right in there. But it is so light, you would not think this rod right here would handle these fish. I know that uh, I know that when we were down there in the Everglades, uh, excuse me, down there with Jared and caught the sharks. Um, was it Jared? Yeah, Kyle. Kyle, I'm sorry. 
We were with Kyle Kelso, when and we caught him. When you're ready, we'll roll it. A couple of big sharks on that rod. And let me tell you, uh, if you like the old rods, you're going to love the new rods. Um, the reason we went, one of the big reasons we went with Lou's is because anytime I want to change on the rod, if there's something I don't like on the rod or somebody tells me, hey, dude, you need to change this on the rod, we can get it done instantly. With our other company, it would take six, eight, nine months to a year to make any type of change on the rod. So if you, uh, you know, you got anything you don't like about the rods, you do like about the new rods, uh, let us know. Uh, but anyway, that's why we went to Lou's and plus Lou's. We just came back from the Bassmasters here this past weekend. And I searched for that other sign out there that's really, really big in rods and reels, like supposedly the biggest. And I actually had to search for a, uh, one of those signs that said, had the S on it and ended with an O. Wait till they see the titanium reel from oh, Lou's. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you saw Lou's logos everywhere. <laughs> Every single booth. I even think the... <laughs> I think the Shimano booth had a damn loose tag in it. But. Here's a, just so you can see the rod, here's the wind grip, the nice grip on these are the new rods. This is actually a prototype reel, so it's still black. The new reels are coming in in June, will be in white. Uh, but if you haven't seen them, uh, they come in a what we call sky blue and a sea green or a sea foam green. Actually, like Blair's shirt right there. So. Yep. Same color as my shirt. Well, you got to see that one. So yeah. It kind of blends in. Yeah. But uh, shoot, you can match your rods to your boat, your reels to your boat, your, or your shoes, or, so you know. those rods be good for small mako and blue sharks. Oh, uh, yeah, the blue sharks, that's a fun shark. Kind of rolls up on your line, though. We caught those off of uh, Block Island with uh, Captain Chifo. Captain Dave Chifo Dave and Chifo. Johnny Luchka. Johnny Luchka. Yeah. Well, let's show okay. them that rod, how it's going to Guys, we were out. I'll go ahead. We were out... Uh, this is really the first rod I've, or first fish I've seen caught on this big offshore rod. And it's probably, how big of a shark was it? I don't know. We caught big, several. But. Big shark. <laughs> uh, so let's roll this clip and you guys get a little behind the scenes. This show is probably going to be airing three weeks from now on YouTube. This is Key West uh, with Captain Kyle Kelso with uh, a monster shark. Check this out. And it's There we go, right there. What else to do on a windy day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can always uh, shark it out. You know, sit somewhere a little shallower, you're not getting beat up, and pull on some big fish. Well, it is getting late in the day, and I definitely want to test out these new offshore speed sticks by Lou's, man. They have absolutely outdone themselves with these rods. The inshore stuff, you know, hands down, I love them. So we'll see how these offshore ones work. Let's test them out. Yeah, man. Come on, fish. Oh, there's one coming in hot right here. Coming in there. Coming in good and hot. That's the one we needed. <laughs> nice. Uh, 305 Rich, E Rich, uh, says, how do you tie the mug and spoon? It's got a ring on it already. Uh, so you can actually put a polymer knot down there. A polymer knot's a hundred percent knot. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time it's going to break above the knot if you do break your line. Uh, but it's got the ring already on there just so it does, it's, it makes it free to swim. So I tie it right to that ring. Sometimes I'll tie a, a loop to that, but I think for the most part with the ring that comes on the Mogan spoon, uh, that's all you need for the play in the reels. Uh, we're going to take some questions right now as well. So um, Let us know where you're from out there, folks. Let us know. I see Rockport, Texas. Rockport, Fantastic. Uh, full Pensacola. Yep, Santos caught 320 inch trout out of Rockport, Texas. So just met the, the, oh, that's okay. Tristan, what's happening, man? Thanks for coming out and see us at the new uh, Dicks there in Pace. That was definitely a, uh, definitely oh, yeah. a good show, man. Yeah. Love, love that area up there. It was, you know, you get off that beach a little bit and it's kind of old Florida. I love it, man. It is, it's neat up there. Thanks for all the military folks coming out. Oh, yeah, all the military Great. guys. Thanks uh, thanks for your service and thanks for coming out and see us. Glad a lot of you watch the show and remembered that I was in the Air Force at one time. <laughs> long time ago, but uh, let's see. Fish everything. Here, what's the worst fish I've ever eaten? Um, I don't know if it was because I had altitude sickness or... <laughs> 
I wasn't feeling good, but I would say the sturgeon was, I mean, it just, it tasted like I was chewing a sponge. Uh, everybody else loved it, but you know, I just, I, I think it was, it had to do with my, uh, my sickness that was going on at the time, which was altitude sickness or getting over something. I don't know what it was, but I know in about three days, I lost 13 pounds and yeah, there was something wrong. Uh, it's rare when Blair doesn't eat fish. Oh yeah, it's rare when I don't eat fish. I've eaten a lot of fish and that, that was probably, uh, I bet I can make it taste good. It was, it was done in a restaurant. ever going to come back to the Lone Star State? As a matter of fact, we are coming to Lone Star State here this year. We're going to do a bass show from Laredo, uh, which should be pretty fun because the guy guarantees 10-pound bass every day. We'll see about that. I've, I've heard that little phrase. We'll be done before noon. 10-pound oh, <laughs> bass every day. We'll see what happens. Then we're going to take it down to Lower Laguna Madre with uh, Mark Nichols and Ed Zayak. And uh, we're actually going to target some snook down there. So snook outside of Florida, but still in the United States. That's going to be something pretty rare. Um, San Antonio. San Antonio. Another. On? Here's another fish that that people said was terrible. I made it taste good. It was spoonbill uh, or paddlefish, whatever you want to call them. Last year I was out in Oklahoma with my buddy uh, Philip, and uh, within about 30 minutes after I got off the plane. I had my first spoonbill on, and it was fun. And he, 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 he described it perfect. He said, it's the only freshwater fish that fights like a saltwater fish. They jump. They actually look like a little, uh, a little what, uh, swordfish, freshwater. From New Jersey, PJ Schwartz. We came up there and did a show out of Block Island. We also did one with uh, Johnny Luchka out of the lower end of Long Island Sound right off of New Rochelle, catching stripers. Uh, Search Stars and Stripers on YouTube, yep. and you can check that out. Stars and Stripers, check that one out. It was a fun show. Uh, I always love fishing new places and stuff I've never done, and you know, snagging those pogies that were this big. I guess they call them bunka up there, or bunker, but they were just pogies that were about this big, monster pogies. Something we call horse, horse pogies down here when we go uh, big king fishing, which is on the agenda as well. Uh, do an episode in Okaloosa Sound. Where is Okaloosa Sound? Is that up in the panhandle? I think so. Gaming with Billy. Okaloosa, I think I know where's, where, where that's at. Uh, come back to Tampa Bay. Hey, if you're on fish in Tampa Bay this week, give a call a producer. We'll come out and do a <laughs> show. We, we are trying, you know, nobody's on any good fish right now as far as what everybody's saying. Uh, I've talked to quite a few of the guides out there and it's, it's it hadn't turned on yet. Uh, but when it does, we'll definitely be back in Tampa Bay. Uh, there we go. DT, the name, DT's the name. I've uh, been waiting Whoops. to see someone go to Texas and do snook. Uh, where are you going to do it? That wasn't, that's supposed to be over there. All right, so what about uh, another thing that we're going to show you guys tonight? Let's get to our next clip. Um, is we're going to do some cooking segments, and Blair tells us how to fillet a fish, right? Yeah, keep this keep this a secret. Everybody knows, and have, every time I've ever caught a sheephead on the show, accidentally, I've always talked about uh, how much I love to eat sheephead, and the biggest response I get is, geez, I hate cleaning those things. I've got to have steel gloves on. Pay attention. This is how you clean a sheephead without poking your hands or getting dirty. Watch this. All right, everybody complains about how tough it is to clean a sheep head because of these little dudes right here. Those there, I mean, I could all, if I touched it that hard, I could draw blood. They are that sharp and they will flat mess you up. So after cleaning a ton of these for my mom, I figured out a nice, easy way to clean them. Most people, they want to start up at the head and try to come down and cut through all those scales. And like I said, those scales. What, did it show the whole segment of how to clean? Well, no, we didn't show. Uh, I, I gotta leave something for people to. All right. Well, maybe you didn't get to see the whole thing. You're gonna have to tune in to see how I clean a sheep head. And let's uh, see, no, no scars, no pokes. And I got this little. I picked up a bacteria years ago called Microbacteria marinum. And if you get pricked by one of those little fish, a lot of times you get a, a rotten spot on your hand. Look it up. It's a pretty nasty deal. Uh, black drum. Definitely be out for some black drum, Roel. 
uh, out of Port Aransas, Cool Beans. I yes. love Port Aransas. Almost moved to Rockport years ago, about 15 years ago. It was that close. But uh, something about that wind you guys have and having to put out three drift socks just to do the flats, I don't know. Gilby's, more power to you. Gilby's uh, fishing out of Port Canaveral this Thursday. What kind of fish could a person catch? I'm sorry, I'm going out to fish out of Port Canaveral this Thursday. Um, get you some jig heads, some big old shrimp, and fish the buoy lines right now. I uh, <laughs> Hang on, everybody shows me their pictures. i got to show you this one. Who? Not that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my buddy, Philip. I took him out. This is three weeks ago. Three weeks ago right there, that's my buddy Philip Allen, old Air Force vet buddy of mine, I uh, was stationed with, and that's about an 18, maybe we can push 20 pounds on that for a triple tail. But uh, they're around the buoys right now, any floating surface structure out there. Uh, we're getting a southeast wind, so you're going to be getting a lot of the uh, sargasm weed hopefully coming in, and a lot of times you'll find them hanging underneath that. But just because you don't see them, or if you have your hummingbird and your side finder on, you can see them hanging on that chain down there. That's how we found them that day. They were in the dirtiest water uh, that, that we could find on any of the buoys, and that's a really, really good bet right now for Port Canaveral. Have I ever fished Port O'Connor? Yes, I have. Jeffrey, that was the very first place I fished in Texas. Uh, now this was even before we started the show. I just went traveling out there and doing a tournament trail of red fishing and uh, fish Port O'Connor. That was, like I said, my very first spot out there, out near the old Coast Guard station. And uh, man, we caught a, we probably caught 150 trout that day. Uh, most of them about the 20, 20 inch range. But uh, Christopher Hobby, no I don't. I don't, he fell off the face of the earth. What? Uh, somebody asking about Fish Boy. Oh. I don't have any idea what happened to him. I know he went out running, uh, running crew boats out in Louisiana and last I heard. Don't know what happened to him. Uh, when's the next time fishing Port Canaveral? Brandon, I'm not sure. We're, uh, we're waiting for it to really turn on both over there and over here. Uh, as everybody knows, you might get out and catch one or two good fish right now, but to get out and actually film a great show or some good, good segments that we're doing, uh, it's, everything's about a month late, I think. Wait a second, wait a second. Is that my roommate from college on here? Johnny Dam? Johnny Dam? Yeah. What's going on? You're up in Ohio, right? I think. What's going on, man? Johnny Dam. It's that damn family again. Yeah. I went up to uh, went up to your dad's hometown, and I forgot where I was. Oh, it's where the damn theater is, and the damn bar, <laughs> and the damn dams. <laughs> Y'all are everywhere up there. But uh, yeah, that was in. Um, that was a long time ago. But yeah, I was there. I saw I saw your relatives. Uh, Adam, will you do a show with Louisa? Who's Louisa? Fishing with, that's, that's Jimmy Nelson's girlfriend. I don't think that would be, uh, that what? would work. I'm not sure. How about that, Jimmy? <laughs> Philly. That's it. Uh, Adam, so sad. Why are you sad, Adam? Philly. So Johnny's in Philly. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> Trying to, trying to read all the questions. They're popping up quick, so if I don't get your question, post again, and I'll be able to try to, uh, try to get to it. Have uh, you ever been considering doing a show at Sebastian Inlet? Uh, a little, such a little tight little niche there. Uh, I'd like to go show people how to do it uh, instead of, you know, people cutting in line as you drift, do the drift. And if you've ever fished Sebastian Inlet, you know what I'm talking about. When the snook are in, you get the guys running up current, and they drift right back through the fenders. And right before you hit where the breakers are, you turn around, you come back up, and you do it again. Um, and you got some people just like today in the line. Oh, <laughs> a little sky juice falls on somebody's windshield, and they just lose their minds. They forget how to drive. Um, but anyway, that's just like people cutting in when you're trying to merge in, and you get somebody behind you cutting in in front of you. Um, it's, it, it's a circle. And... You just have to you have to get in the get in the rotation of the boats when the snook are in there thick. November comes around. That's when I like fishing Sebastian because you got the big flatties in there that uh, absolutely love catching flounder out of there. Uh, plus, I got a, you know I got my snook spots down there near the Ten Cent Bridge and all over Stewart where those giant ones live, and it's a lot less headache. Uh, so that's why I don't snook fish at Sebastian Inlet. Plus, the the big trout and the grass down there. Mm, 
I know, I know the uh, grass is vanishing. We got to do something about that, guys. We're working with the CCA right now. We're trying to get clams put back in the river. Um, but we are, we are doing, I'm doing everything I can right now to bring that river back. It's not going to come back like it was when I was a kid in my lifetime. But hopefully my kid will be able to see it one day the way I saw it. Mason, yep, it can be very crowded. <laughs> you guys make sure you get signed up for the Fish with the Mogan Man giveaway. It's on your screen right there. Go to the website, get signed up. Uh, we're giving it away in July, a trip with Captain Blair. We're going to bring all the cameras out and uh, film it. And uh, you also get $5,000 worth of products. Oh, yeah, we're going to give you a bunch of stuff. You yeah. can go out and uh, get some of the new rods, some new, uh, new lures. DOA's got a bunch of new lures out, two in general that I absolutely love, the snake and the PT. Here you go, here's the PT. Here's the PT right here. People say, well, that don't look like a fish. Well, I used to, my first response is to him, remember what a tiny torpedo looks like? It's got a prop on the front and a prop on the back. Tell me that looks like a fish. That looks like a fish when you're, when you're walking it across the water, or even for your freshwater guys, pulling it across all the hydrilla out there. Uh, and Okeechobee, they are, they are smacking these guys right here, and that is the PT. PT-7. PT-7. So somebody has a question about, bought the new 7.6 Ron Leva, but have only one complaint. Didn't have a hook keeper other than that awesome action. Uh, let's see. I, no, nob, nob, Noblich one. Yeah. Nobly? Okay. Anyway, the reason there is no hook keeper on there is because... I've never liked a hook keeper on a rod, and I said, don't put it on the rod. I've always hooked it in the bridge of the first eye, right there. Hook it in the bridge, not in the eye itself, but in the bridge, because if you happen to hook it in there, with the zirconium inserts, you're not gonna scratch it, but just it's, it's a lot easier to get out of the eye, and you're not gonna mess it up in there. Even if you do put a little scratch in there, then you, know, you don't wanna do that. Hook it right there. But the real reason one was of the, it was catching on it. Right? Oh yeah, one of the real reasons is it was catching on it. You know, you, you got a, a strong wind from the left or from the right. You do a really long cast, and that line was getting caught on it here. It was getting caught on it here. It's getting caught on it here. See, that's one that we left on. But um, in any of the shows, look real close. I grinded them all off. But um, it just doesn't work. Uh, doesn't work for me. And plus, when you stick it down in the rod holders as well, if we had it down here or back here, um, you wouldn't be able to get it in the rod holder. So right there, and if you're using a top water plug, it happens to be in the side rod holder, just make sure you don't run into it. Like my cameraman, Adam, always reminds me of when I stick it in there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just um, just hook it in the bridge. Sorry, sorry there's no eye on it, but uh, you, everybody got keeper. used to braid, get used to no eye or no, hook uh, no hook keeper. But uh, I like it a lot better. <clears throat> Kobe on a swimming mullet. That would be with Scott Lum and with uh, uh, who else did I? Do? Sam Heaton. Uh, we did. Jimmy we did. Ross. Yeah, Jimmy Ross. Everywhere I've thrown that thing, I've caught at Kobe. I've caught Kobe up in Destin. They ate it, and I love it when uh, when the guides up there told me they're not ever going to eat that thing. That makes me want to throw it even more, but because uh, I know that they'll eat it. But the swimming mullet is one excellent excellent bait. Just how similar are the old rods to the new as far as structure and weight? Um, it's not the S-curve technology that Wright McGill had, but and, and I can't knock that S-curve technology when it came out. It was the best at the time. The rods were really light, but like I was saying earlier in the show, uh, Lou's can make a change like that to a rod. They're a rod company and a real company. Uh, so that's one, that's one reason why we change. And the materials are lighter and stronger. And the, the latest, greatest stuff that comes out, Lou's can incorporate that into the rods um, a lot quicker than, uh, than most companies out there. So, yes, they are, they are similar, but they're different, if that makes any sense. And you're working <laughs> on other ones, too, offshore. What yep. else is coming down the pike? Uh, we got boat rods coming out, fly rods, surf rods, um, every type of rod you can think of to saltwater fish uh, from the beach, from, you know, shore. Uh, even out in California, we're going to we're going to see about doing some rods out there for the calicos because uh, the actions of the rods down here where we fish the flats out there for you guys in California, uh, you got to get them out of that kelp really quick, and uh, so we might be doing some little bit stiffer rods. And if you know if we don't do them, Lose makes a great bass rod. That's what those guys out there use. Uh, Lose makes a great bass rod that would work very well out there for the calicos and stuff. But I tell you, if I'm chasing yellowtail out there, which is different than our yellowtail here. 
Um, it's what they make hamachi out of. It's, it's basically a Pacific um, amberjack. Kind of looks like a Pacific amberjack. And uh, the saltwater rods, if you take them out there, they, they work perfect for those guys. Um, have you ever new Dick Sporting Goods coming to McAllen, Texas? Will we be there when? You going to McAllen? McAllen, I'm not sure about that one there, Javier. <laughs> yeah, we'll have uh, to we look. We'll let you know. Yeah, I have to look on the schedule. Uh, I know that we're, there is some out in Texas in that fall. we will be at in the fall, so um, it might be McAllen. I'm not too sure yet. It's usually within 50 or 75 miles from the coast, right? Yes, they, they're trying to hit, uh, there's 113 stores right now. Okay, so there. And there's... yeah, if you're up in New York, guys, uh, I think uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, go check them out. There are the immature rods there. And the Huntington, uh, New York, a Long Island store has our blue rods and the green rods. So if you're up there or you know a friend, make sure you let them know to go in there and get those rods and they'll put more in those markets because they're kind of checking it out and uh, seeing if they'd be popular in those markets. Uh, got a question from Adam here. He wants to know if we're still promoting the snook hatchery out of uh, Sarasota down there. Not uh, at the present time. We got them started. They're still doing the snook. Uh, but, you know, we got them started, so they're, they're, they're on their own now. Uh, hopefully, they're going to be able to do some releases. They Actually, we're going to do probably some stuff um, with the CCA. Yep. With uh, Duke Energy, we found out has a redfish hatchery. That's how they get all the redfish for the tag, the star tournament that's coming up here soon. Hope everybody's registered for the star tournament. Uh, if you haven't heard about that, you guys need to get in. They get tons of prizes and thousands of dollars worth of scholarships. So if you're not involved yet with the star tournament, go get registered. But we're going to go do a show with them, with Lisa Fitzgerald. And she's going to take us for a tour of the uh, the power plant or the, the Duke Energy uh, redfish hatchery. So I, I look real forward to putting that on the YouTube stuff. Again, more stuff for YouTube, maybe not for the TV show, but uh, cool stuff. I uh, got a question from Leslie Thomas out there. What new braided line am I using now? It's Seaguar Smackdown. Uh, it's so smooth, I don't have to drop down anything below 15 pound test with it. I know with the other companies I was with, I always liked throwing that little diameter stuff, that eight pound, the six pound, the 10 pound, but actually the 20 pound uh, Seaguar Smackdown is as thin as say the 10 pound and the 15 pound is like fishing with eight pound braid. So if you do get a chance to try it, I highly recommend you do. Uh, they're very proud of it, but it, I've got some on some reels that have been on there a year and a half and it doesn't turn like into yarn like some of the other braids out there do. It stays nice and smooth and you'll know when it's time to change it because you'll start breaking it off and you know, it, then it'll be time to change it. But after a year and a half, I'm still using some of the same line just, just to tr test it. For, for my uh, for my brain really, but uh, that way it works great. Gaming with Billy here asking where in the when is the offshore rods coming out? Uh, middle of the summer this year, or I think they're going to debut at ICAST right in July, okay. and then they'll probably hit stores this fall. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that's the timeline right now. Still got a little more testing to do with them, uh, which is you know fishing of course, but uh, we're going to do a little bit more testing with them and then. When I, when I basically, you know, give the blessing for the final go round, uh, they will be in the stores and I'm very close to, to doing that right now because they are, they are working. You're going to see that tonight on the internet show that starts at seven, uh, caught some big sharks on that rod. No, tonight is tarpon and cuda. Oh. Tarpon and cuda. Okay. You're going to see them catch tarpon and cuda then. <laughs> they were good on tarpon and cuda as well. Jeremy's asking, how about the Orlando, Florida stores? All of the Dick Sporting Goods stores in Orlando have the blue and the green rods. Definitely. Yep. All the Florida stores. Cause you're, I mean. Yes. You're, every, every Florida store. For a 4,000 reel, what pound would you recommend with Seaguar Smackdown? Uh, if it's on the eight footer, I'd do the, I, I, on the 4,000, I put either, a, I mean, on the eight footer, I would put a 4,000 or 5,000 size reel. Uh, each one of them, I'd do 20 pound Smackdown on it. Just, you, it, it's like dental floss smooth. It is, it is so different than any other line I've ever used. I've been using it for three, four years now, and yeah. I can literally count the number of wind knots I've had on one hand. And most of the time that was my fault because it was so windy 
and cast and I didn't flip it over with my hand or I flipped it over with my hand and it created a little loop in there. That's a, and that's, I think that happened twice on me. So literally less than, less than five times I've had wind knots and that is, that is no lie. And a lot of that has to do with the way I cast and the way I flip the bale over by hand and make sure the line is in the roller at the time. It's, it, I do it subconsciously now where it just, it's one, one motion I watch the lure and about 15 feet before it hits, especially if I'm doing a, a real long cast, You'll see me click that bale over by hand and give the line a little tug and it, uh, it keeps you from getting the wind knots. There's a good question there. Uh, somebody asked Brandon or Brendan O'Connor asked, what is your favorite feature on the new rods? What do you like most about the new rods? They don't break. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. That's pretty much they do not break. I have, I have pulled them over. I've, I've broken them on purpose where I tied them to the tree and, and took them until they snapped. And when they snap, everybody's gonna look at you because it sounds like a 22 going off. But I mean, they, I, I, the, the butt of the rod, uh, or should I say the tip of the rod was below the butt of the rod when it, when it finally snapped. I don't recommend doing that on fish, but uh, I had to see where the breaking point of the rods were and I have not broken one on a snag on a fish. I did close one in my door the other day and it broke the tip of it off. But, uh, and that was my eight footer too. That was my favorite one. Uh, uh, they're going to see that eight footer tonight, guys. Yep. If you watch uh, tonight on YouTube at seven o'clock, right when we get done here, it's going to go live. It's scheduled to go live at seven. Uh, I've never <clears> seen an eight foot rod bend so much pulling this tarpon in from under the boat. And again, you guys leave a comment on the video tonight when you see it and let us know what you think. Because I, I mean, I thought it was going to break for sure. And uh, it whipped this tarpon pretty quick. I, I was impressed. Um, Trevor Wells asked a question here that um, I could probably spend the next three hours uh, <laughs> ripping Tallahassee and ripping the people. I mean, ripping people hard. <laughs> um, he says, "What's the? What is my thoughts on the water quality conditions plaguing the Indian River Lagoon?" Um, people in Tallahassee need to say pop, pull their heads out of you know where the sun don't shine, and do something about that area over there because. Um, it, it's, it is a mess. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's nothing that just happened overnight. They knew what was going to happen when they put causeways in, when they put septic tanks in, when they fertilize, when they spray the roundup, when they took all the clams out, when they took the oysters out, I can keep going and going and going. Um, like I said, we're trying to do some, do, uh, trying to do something in there right now by restocking clams in there. You know, the DEP let I don't know how many thousands of people get their clam license and come down and take all of our filtration system out of the Indian River Lagoon system, both the Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, and Banana River. And um, yeah, it, it's a little passionate subject that I have. But yeah, the people up there in Tallahassee need to pull their heads out of the, out of the, you know what? I mean, I, I am very, very passionate about that right now. Uh, doing everything I can to help it out. Um, my, we, we need some type of a flush out of there. Uh, they're talking about opening the locks. That ain't going to do nothing. They actually need to be pumping water in there 24 seven and have it push out to south towards Sebastian Inlet and, and just have it drain out like it normally used to do, you know, 70 years ago. Um, and if they say they can't do it, take a look at those big giant, uh, big giant pipes that they put in, in Fort Pierce for the nuclear power plant, pumping water in that to cool that off. That's all we need. That's all we need. We need some giant culvert pipes. That would be, and you know, I'm sure I'm gonna get environments. It's gonna do this, it's gonna do that. Well, it's gonna die if we don't do this. So we'll have another session on that one. Santos is asking, uh, what is the difference between your rods here and an ugly stick? And an ugly stick? Well, and an ugly stick, if you can see, can they see me? Uh, actually, just grab it here, take it. Ugly sticks about from here up or like, and if you do the ones I'm thinking of, from like here up or solid glass, that's heavy. It's very heavy. You lose sensitivity from the glass back down to where the, where the actual carbon comes in. And there's so much glass in a, in a ugly stick, but you can't break them. I mean, you can slam them in car doors and you know, bend them in half, tie them in a knot. They're not going to break. Uh, but you don't get the sensitivity. You don't have the, uh, the non-slip non grip like we have here. You don't have that on an ugly stick. Um, and, grant, and some of the ugly sticks I know, and I saw this uh, question up there a minute ago, what's the price of them? 
Uh, same, same as before. They're at a $99 price. Actually, uh, I've been seeing them on sale at some of the appearances that we're doing for $79. So um, check them out at your local Dick's and see, see what, uh, what the price is at the time. But the price is going to be right at the same, $99 bucks when, it, when they go off sale. And uh, they're just a lot lighter than, those, than the ugly sticks out there. Much more sensitive. They're, it's high velocity carbon that they have uh, put into the manufacturing of the rod. Doesn't have the S curve like the other rods we had out there, um, but they're very, very light and sensitive. That's one thing you're going to notice. And that's one thing I've noticed everybody grabs a rod. They're like, ooh, that's lighter than the other ones, huh? Yep, sure is, and stronger too. So. Yeah, that's when we have people come out and see us, just talk a little bit about our, our schedule. Uh, this, this Saturday, Blair, Patrice, and myself will be at West Shore, West Shore Mall in Tampa. On Saturday, uh, 10 to 2, I'm going to throw it out there. I don't even actually know the time, so tell me if I'm wrong, Patrice. Um, so this weekend is West Shore in Tampa. The following weekend, it's the North Fort Myers Dick Sporting Goods Store. And the weekend after that, it's Lakeland, which is very close to where Blair's at. So those three stores coming up, they might have the rods for sale. If not, you surely can come and get a $10 off coupon from us, and it'll at least bring it down to 89 but I think when Blair's in the store doing an appearance, they drop them to $79.99. So West Shore this weekend, Fort Myers the following weekend, and Lakeland after that. All right? Gaming with Billy. If you're a Gator fan. Yeah. <laughs> right there on one of those blue rods, it matches up pretty good. Uh, he was asking if there's bait casters coming out. And these are Lou's bait casters, one best to show two last years ago. Year, maybe last year. Last year. Um, Orange Crush. Orange Crush. Great reel. I've been using it, throwing, you know, this and that. Haven't been to the, uh, haven't been to the sawgrass yet, throwing spinner baits with it yet. But that's usually where I throw a bait caster is uh, when I'm working my spoon or working a spinner bait. I think uh, Ty from 30 miles out, he's on the Lose Pro Staff. We just met him up in Pace, Florida, and uh, he throws that one right there. It's the Lose White. Uh, it's going to match the blue once we come out with our blue ones. Uh, it'll look really nice, but that's what uh, Ty from 30 miles out, if he's watching. What's going on, Ty? In Texas. Actually, no, he's in the Panhandle now. Moved from there. Let's see. You're going to have a big Yeti Tundra on your boat? No, we're probably going to have the flip. Depends on which boat. Yeah, it depends on which, which boat. If we're in a little Mosquito, no, we're not going to have the big Tundra. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the little flip or the hopper in the little boats and uh, probably the the tundras uh, in the Skeeters. But yes, Yeti. That's not, right. We forgot to tell, forgot everybody, to tell that. everybody that's, that's our, right. That's one of our other new sponsors out there that we just got this year. Forgot all um, about that. Um, you're going you're gonna to love the latches on them. <laughs> <laughs> what can right. I say? They, I mean, they keep ice great. They're, they're rotomotive coolers. Uh, I love them. They're great coolers. I love them. Um, what fly rod and wheel reel would I recommend for redfish? Um, an eight weight. Um, and when it comes to fly rods and reels, that's kind of where, you know, I kind of draw the line where you'd need to spend, if, 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 if you're out, you know, I would say, God, how, how can I put this? Um, the high end rods that are $700 a piece you're definitely going to see a big difference in the way they cast compared to other fly rods that don't cost that much. Um, that is a game in its own. And, um, you know, the fly rods that we'll come out with, uh, I'll, you know, that's what I'm going to fish with. I like them. Um, but they're, you know, they're not $700 either. So, you know, if you like the spinning rods, you'll like the fly rods as well. I see Jimmy RML on there. Oh, What's yes. What's going on there, sir? What's up, Jimmy? He's switching over to lose. Yep, he pro will be staffer. will be a lose pro staffer on there. You're in What's Georgia? a good starter boat for inshore and offshore gaming with Billy? He's got a lot of questions. A <laughs> uh, good starter boat for inshore and offshore. I'd say the XX twenty one fifty. I like the two ten. The twenty one fifty is taller gunnels for kids and families. I yeah. think. But they uh, they draft really really shallow, um, and plus the, the, the every Skeeter boat that I've ever been in. Rides like it's two feet bigger than what it is. Yep. I mean, that's that's about how good I can explain it. Um, old Jenny Smith just bought my old boat. Oh, nice. The one, that one right there. There's your boat, Jenny. <laughs> but uh, her and her husband Gary just uh, just bought a boat off me, and uh, they are very very happy. 
At least their texts say they're happy. So. <laughs> <clears throat> Gibby, for a beginning fisherman in the salt water, how many rods would a person need for what kind of money could you spend on rods and reels on average? Um, is it Gilby? 100 bucks, Gilby. Yeah, Just Gilby. Just get one. Get 100 the 7.6. 100 <laughs> bucks, get the 7.6. Um, if you find that the 7.6 isn't big enough for you, they're, like I said, they're only, they're only you know, 99 bucks and you can get... Almost anywhere, $10 off coupon at Dick's. You can go online. They're on there all the time. Um, and it's a, just a good all-round rod. That 7.6, you can take fresh water, salt water. Um, you can take it in the surf casting. Uh, I recommend doing lures and, you know, doing that way and surf with it. But uh, that's just a good all-round rod. I've caught some big fish on the 7.6, and I've caught some small fish on the 7.6. And I have just as much enthusiasm and fun catching the little fish as I do the big fish with that rod. So, and I would match it up with a 3,500 size reel or 35. The new 30, 40s will be out. Probably in June, June July. we're looking, looking for, the, for the reels to be out, but the- The BW 30s, BW 40s, BW 20s. Yeah, the 30 is what I definitely would recommend for it because it's light, you can fish with it all day and it, it'll hold enough, uh, hold enough line on there in case you hook a big snook with it. Uh, where right. we'll be fishing this upcoming season, or are you going to play another clip? No, go ahead. I, I'm, well, we got okay. 10, 11 minutes for the show to start, so I, I got to wrap That's it up it? here because I'm going to go watch a show. That was a quick. That was a quick. Uh, <laughs> That's a quick hour there, Trevor. Go ahead. You find so, a question. You, you the find a question. I'm going to take a minute here. All right, guys. So what, what we have up on the screen is our enhanced it, YouTube description. Uh, one of the things we're going to do differently on our YouTube videos. I'm sure if you're watching on a phone, it's very hard to read this this text. But at the bottom of the video, in the description, you hit show more. We're going to have all the products that we catch fish on listed. We're going to have all the lose products listed. We're going to have Fish with the Mogan Man contest, the calendars. There's, you can book the guide. Everything is in the description of the video and all of our videos. So whether it be, oh, look, that's my, uh, my alert. That's his phone that should be on silent. Uh, hey, difference. Trevor, are you Pat's son? Just curious. <laughs> But yeah, check out the descriptions. Brand new, updated. Where is that thing? It's in my pocket. David Baumgartner, uh, my favorite fish is trout over 10 pounds. 10 I could, minutes. I, I, could, I could go catch, you know, 600 pound marlin if I wanted to. I could go out and dolphin, you know, big trout, I think, are the smartest fish out there because it takes Whoops. them so long to get up to 10 pounds. Sorry. Y'all uh, have been looking at that description too long. Sorry, I had to put up, get my, my phone turned off. Sorry. Slapping. It's on, but it just takes. Hey. That's my 10 minute, 10 minute uh, mark here. We're done in 10 minutes, guys. Uh, what's the largest reel I'd recommend for the eight footer would be the 50 or 5,000 size, however you want to look at it. Uh, getting bigger than that, it's going to get real ass in heavy and it's going to be kind of un uncomfortable and not too good to work a fish or work a lure with. Uh, let's see. Whew. Favorite bait for snook on the beaches. Uh, the Miradine, definitely the Miradine, especially if I'm on the West Coast, um, the Miradine right here. I like the green back with the white sides and it's got a little orange chin. If I'm fishing where there's a lot of, tan lot of tannic in the water, I would throw that guy right there. there and that one is, whoops, there we go. That one's the Mogan series right there that actually has trocar hooks on it. Um, if, you're into, if you're into really, really big snook on the beach, uh, I recommend getting the regular mirror lure. This is more for big trout because the big trout aren't going to straighten those hooks or got a chance of breaking those hooks off. And those big trout that are over eight pounds can pull just as hard as a big snook. So uh, another one that works well is that one right there. The old school. Terra. Terra. Works well. Works well. Thanks. Come on down, Mark. There's plenty of room left down here. Shane, my phone is turned off. I promise you. Look, here. All right, for all you people who are bitching. Okay? <laughs> it's down. Oh, God. No, Shane I Turner. Hey, I always thought I'd get a call See? from him while I'm on TV. It's down. It's, the volume's down. It's just, that's my notification to post a YouTube video Mondays at 7. So, give me a break. Uh, no, Carl, I just went to Wiggins Pass in Naples and Snook only wanted live bait. Why do you think this is? Uh, two things. Uh, you weren't using the right 
artificial. And sometimes, you know, it's, you know, it depends on what kind of bait was moving up and down through the past. That's what I would have tried to match as far as a DOA or a mirror lure. Um, the, the brown dog works great. The, the, if you, these guys right here, if you take, this is the DOA shrimp, you can take that J hook out of there and put a jig head on there and bounce it on the bottom. I've done snook that way too. Uh, when you, when you do have a real heavy current, I don't know how, how I've fished Wiggins Pass a, a couple of times. Um, but you can take a jig head and put it in that, in that shrimp right there and bounce it just like you would a jig and, uh, might produce, but it's always, remember, it's always easier to feed them than it is to fool them. So when, when they won't eat live, when they won't eat artificials, you'll see me throwing live bait as well. Object of the game is to get the fish to the boat. So no matter what you, no matter how you do it, you know, that's always the object of the game. A lot funner catching them on artificial, but you know, it's just fun catching them for me. Tristan Williams, yes, bait casters will be out probably later this year. Uh, the first on the list were just the inshore to get them out as soon as possible. So they're coming. And I can't wait to see the blue rod with this orange reel. Oh, uh, yeah. If you haven't seen, uh, this is the orange crush lose reel, bait caster reel. And uh, that paired up with this blue. If I'm a Florida Gator fan or I'm up in Gainesville, I'm certainly getting me an outfit like that. Corpus Christi, he's got a question. Uh, little cow tail. Um, we don't have any up here right now, but look for the DOA cow. Um, Kevin's going to get one right now. We'll show you what I, this is what I like throwing in Texas, uh, especially around Corpus Christi because it looks like a little tiny mullet that y'all have there. There's mullet that are about the size of your pinky. A lot of times that's what those redfish love to key in on and eat. Uh, so that's what I do is try to uh, try to imitate the bait that's out there at the time. Everybody's probably try, tired of hearing the crunching of all the stuff, so I'm trying. Here's Let's a, see. Here's Daniel a Dilemma. What do I think of x Wrap versus DOA or Mirror Lure? I've thrown DOA and Mirror Lure my entire career and have inch, not right? seen any reason to change. There's the big four inch one. That one that's a that's a four inch cow. Uh, that one right there, matter of fact, that color works very well in Texas. Uh, don't know why they like them purple, but it's a purple, purple redfish getter for sure. But that's the, that's the four inch. They make a smaller one in that version. They also make a fluke tail one. I do like this one and I like the smaller one that has the tail because sun, it wags like crazy and drives those fish nuts. I use a swim bait hook for this. Uh, don't have one. Yeah, here's a swim bait hook. There's a swim bait hook right there in that DOA. You can see it right there. Um, hooks into this guy perfect. Put a little pinch weight on it and uh, go catch redfish. Go to our tackle shop online and you can buy <coughs> our, uh and the cows, all of the stuff's online. Certainly. So. Mikey Lagrasta. It used to be the brown dog, which is the root beer terrorized, and it has slowly become the golden brim color that I like. It's almost like the, the brown dog. It's just got a little bit more flash in it, I think they can see. Hey, Thresher, keep it up. Is the fly rod and reel oh. still on the market? It's coming. Yes, it's coming. The old fly rods and reels, if you can find them, snag them because there will be no more made. Yep. <clears throat> South Texas. Boy, a lot of Texas folks. Glad, oh, yeah. glad to see you all tuning in from Texas, man. We love it out there. We need to get out there a lot more. Absolutely love Texas. So, like I said, I almost moved out there. I was really, really close. Uh, Spoonbill said he's getting ready in Oklahoma. Okay. That's Shane. Oh, okay. You ready to go film? Oh, yeah. Spoonbill? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm going to take a surf rod out there and <laughs> snag a couple, couple more Spoonbill. <laughs> Actually made them taste good, too, so... <laughs> That's a weird fish, brother. I mean, it is a weird fish. Philip Smith, how much does the red tide affect the bite? Uh, they just shut down during the red tide if they're not dying already. Um, I think we really need to worry about what causes the red tide. And a lot of that's the fertilizers that come out of the golf courses and people's nice green lawns. Isn't that pretty the way they keep their lawn nice and green? Um, and it's all the nutrients that get dumped into the water, especially after a rain. Um, you might see it that we're starting today was our first, um, what do they call them? Showers, afternoon, afternoon showers, summer, sea breeze showers, yeah. uh, it was our first sea breeze showers today. Hopefully we're not going to get some red tide coming in. Um, keep your fingers crossed. 
and hopefully they'll put in some culverts over on the East Coast and flush that cesspool out. Three minutes till the show airs, guys. Episode number one on YouTube is coming at you in three minutes, so we're going to wrap it up here in a little bit, and uh, we're going to go watch it because Blair hasn't even seen it. Uh, haven't seen it yet. With all the, the uh, outtakes footage, and there's a great segment there. Blair teaches you how to, shoot, uh, how to use the, uh, the DOA shrimp for these big tarpons. So, again, it's going to happen here in two minutes. So we're going to stick around just for a little longer. And what was, I'll tell you what was pretty cool about that show. And whenever I go with guides and they say, yeah, they're never going to eat that. Well, let me just try it. No, they're never going to eat it. But watch how I work this shrimp for tarpon. Uh, a lot of times, uh, and people say, well, how do you work the DOA shrimp? Um, go back in any of the episodes that, that you see where I'm using the shrimp, watch how I'm working it. It varies so much from, you know, from cast to cast. And my biggest, uh, my biggest advice I could give you when you're, when you're out there fishing, it's not like you see on TV all the time. You're not going to catch fish every cast. Um, some places you do, but, um, remember how you're working the lure exactly when you get the hit and you might think, well, that's easy to do, but after three hours or whatnot, and you cast them, not getting a hit, you're changing lures out, you're changing this lure, and then all of a sudden, boom, you get a hit. Um, a perfect example, here's what I say in my seminars. After four hours, you're out there drinking you know, plenty of water, Cokes, whatnot. What do you do? You cast your lure out, you put your arm under your rod, you turn around so you don't embarrass your friends, and you take care of your business, and you say, hey, watch what happens while I'm doing this. I'm gonna get a hit. Boom, they get a hit. They get done go back to right exactly the way they were doing the lure for the past four hours, not getting a hit. When actually that bait was sitting on the bottom doing absolutely nothing and they got a hit. You got to think about that. Cast it out, twitch it, let it sit for a minute if that happens. But you'll see me work it all different ways, whether I'm skipping it across the top of the water, putting a jig head in it, um, you know, and always somebody, I saw the question earlier up there, is there anything I don't put Procure on? No. Put it on everything. It's, it's great on French fries, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it on your French fries, kids. Hey, Lisa Berry. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Lisa. And it's 7 o'clock, guys. It's time for us to go watch YouTube. We need to all get off. There's 130 of us on here, and we all got to go watch the show. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a like. Subscribe. Yeah, definitely subscribe. We can use all the subscribers. We can uh, show our sponsors. So send it to your friends. Forward it. Uh, forward it. Well, not forward it. Yeah, yeah share, share it. it. Share it. That's it. <laughs> Got to get the right words in my head here. But uh, share it with ever who you can. And uh, hope y'all enjoy the internet show. It's going to be my first one. I'll be watching it right there with you. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the questions. And uh, Kristen Small. Hey guys, glad to see you're doing well. My throat isn't doing too well, Kristen, but uh, anyway, hope y'all enjoy the show. Here you go. We'll uh, keep answering your question, guys. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.